Today I'm going to do a watercolor painting of some mussel shells. I've had these mussel shells sitting in my art room for a couple of years now. I collected them on an island just uh, off of Vancouver and I've been meaning to paint them for some time so today I'm going to do that and show you show you how I do that. Uh, these ones are a little bit beat up because they've kind of been kicking around my art room for a little bit um, but that uh, some of the wear and tear on them is just something that can show up really nicely when you paint them. Um, I'm not going to paint them looking exactly like these. I'm actually just going to paint three. I'm going, I'm composing them so that we have two pointed down or two pointed up and one pointed down. Um, but I have all four here just so you can see uh, different examples of how they look and how they wear and um, how there's different colors and different uh, uh, wear patterns that you can um, you can paint and it all looks really nice especially if you like paintings with a lot of blues in it um, so as you can see they're shaped kind of like a bit of a beanish shaped um, but narrow at this top part and uh, wider and rounded at the bottom so what I've done is I've drawn three muscle bean shapes. Hopefully you can see them. I tried to draw them a little bit darker so that you can. So you can see I have the narrow part at the top of two of them and then this narrow part down here. Um, you don't need to pre-draw uh, the muscles if you don't want to. The nice thing about muscles is they are kind of a oblong wonky shape so you can, um, if you feel confident in your drawing skills you don't need to actually draw it on you could just basically draw the shape with your paintbrush as you go but i thought i would uh, start with some pencil on as a guide so i'm just going to take my kneaded eraser and just pick up some of the pencil so that it's not quite so dark the one thing to keep in mind when you do a pencil drawing with any watercolor is once you put watercolor paint down on top of it it's, you can't erase it anymore. So anywhere that it's really light, you'll still see the pencil showing through, which is not the end of the world, but it just depends if you want that or not. Okay, so today I'm using, I have two paintbrushes today. You don't need to, but um, I have both and I use them um, for different purposes as I'll show you through the demonstration. I have a size six and a size 10 round. Both are Princeton, Princeton Heritage. I like the Princeton Heritage paintbrushes quite a bit, um, especially these round, round ones, they're quite useful. So I'm gonna set this number six aside for the moment. And I'm going to start with uh, 10 rounds. So I'll just set that on my palette over here. And the three colors, I'm only going to use three colors today. We're using two different blues. So ultramarine blue and indigo and one purple, which is dioxazine purple. Uh, you can use different blues if you want. Um, you can use turquoise colors. Um, really, any sort of a blue will work for this. Um, if you don't have an indigo, choose your darkest blue. I use the indigo because it makes a really, really, really deep blue for muscles. And then dioxazine purple, just to add a little bit of uh, warmth to the color, the colors that you're using. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to start just by getting some water onto my brush. And just wetting the whole area of the first muscle. And through this process, I'm going to use uh, a couple different methods of watercolor painting. I'm gonna start with some wet on wet and then I'm gonna let that dry and then possibly do more wet on wet. Um, but in the end, I'll do some uh, wet on dry. So the first one is all wet. And now I'm going to take a little bit of ultramarine blue, get that on my palette. Now I want quite a pale color to start. So I'm just gonna add a bit more water to my ultramarine blue. And just start filling it in. 
Now I say filling it in, but don't fill it in completely. We want the ultramarine blue to mostly be on the outside edges. So leaving some white in the middle. And the ultramarine blue will kind of get pulled towards the middle so that it's not completely white. So I'm going to do that just as my first layer on that one. Okay, now I'm going to get some more water and start working on this middle one. Nice thing about mussels is you can't get them too, too wrong because they really are just kind of blobby little shapes and the colors really do vary. So really, as long as you're kind of in the blue cool end of colors, you can do pretty much anything that you want and make it work. Now with this next one, I'm going to add some darker ultramarine. It's not quite as pale as that other one. And again, go around the edge of it. Now I want to get more blue on this wider end. So I'm, I'm filling it in quite a bit. And then I'm just going to let this edge be nice and soft towards the middle. And then I'm going to use the pointed end of my brush and do a narrower blue down here at the little, I don't know what you call it, the neck of the the neck of the uh, the muscle and fill in a little bit more just so there's not too much white on that one. Now we're going to let that dry as well and with my clean wet paintbrush again just going in and painting just clean wet water. It's okay if your water is a little bit blue um, because you don't really want like pure, pure white on a mussel. So it can be just a bit hint, a, t a hint of blue. So if your water isn't perfectly clean and is blue, that's fine as well. And again, this one's a little bit darker and painting in the outside of this. Now, the nice thing about mussels is often you'll want the color to be darkest on the edges so you're kind of covering over those pencil marks which is really nice so if you've left some pencil marks it tends to not be a big deal now before this last one dries i'm going to start adding in some purple now if you're using dioxazine purple which is what i'm using it's a very strong purple so i'm just going to add a bit of water so that it's not quite so intense. And I'm just gonna start adding some in just to give it a bit of a different shade than the others. I'll be adding purple and the indigo blue to all of them, um, but each one will turn out different in its own way. Adding a bit more of the ultramarine blue. Okay, now so far each one is quite different, um, but we'll add a couple more layers. I'm gonna let this completely dry and then we'll come back and add a couple more layers um, until we're happy with it. Okay, so I've let it dry um, and now we'll start working on the next layer. So again, using my larger size 10 brass brush, just gonna get a little bit of water on it and then I'm gonna start working on the next layers. So for this first one, I'm gonna do a darker, layer of ultramarine, at least to start with. So getting lots of a decent amount of paint on my brush. And I'm going to go right in. So in this case, right now I'm doing wet on dry. 
which is a different technique than what we did in the first layer, which was wet on wet. So one thing to know with this is right now I have a really hard edge, which I'm not going to want to keep. So I'm just going to add some rough edges, get a bit more water on my brush and a bit of the ultramarine just to get a little bit of a softer edge. And then going to one more, uh, or cleaning off my paintbrush one more time. And then just going in with a clean brush to kind of clean up the edges a little bit. And I'm going to get some more ultramarine because I want it a bit darker along the edges here and adding that in. So now we've gone around again and are now, uh, now painting wet on wet. And I'm trying to just put kind of wide, loose, rough, uh, rough brush strokes, not trying to be too picky about exactly where I'm putting things uh, or putting my paint because I want this to look a little bit loose. Now we're gonna start adding some of the indigo. And so I've added just some indigo to my palette. I want a decent amount. Um, and now I'm just going to, I've kind of flattened, I don't know if you can see, but I've flattened my, uh, the point of my brush so that it's a little bit wider that way, but it's quite narrow this way. Uh, so I can get a nice, somewhat narrow point when I paint on the edge here. Now I want some of that ultramarine to see, still be showing through. I just want this uh, indigo to add a bit of color and depth. So I'm making sure not to add too much of it. I just kind of play around with it until I'm fairly happy with it. Now I'm just gonna add I'm going to actually move to my number six round, so I'm going to wet that brush. I'm actually just going to add a little bit of purple to this one. Just to make it a little, give it a little interest, visual interest. So just adding a little bit here and there, just so, just so it's not quite so pure blue. Okay. So I'm going to let that dry and then there will be one more layer just to add um, the last little, last little bit of detail if you want to call it that. Now let's move to the middle one. This middle one I actually want to make quite dark and right now it's fairly pale. So next up I went back to my number 10 brush and I'm going to get a fair amount of indigo onto it. Now we're going to, and this is dry right now, dry, wet on dry. And similar to that previous one, we're just going to uh, start with uh, wet on dry and move to dry on dry, or uh, wet on wet as we make our way through this one. So I'm adding some layers around. I'm gonna add some water to my brush, not fully cleaning it off, um, and then going back to the indigo. And this will be a bit of a paler indigo because it'll be a little bit diluted. And then going one more, this time with quite a clean brush. Um, I have a, an old cotton cloth here and I'm just dabbing off the water just so it's not too, too uh, wet when I go into this again. And going all the way to the center of, of the muscle. And you can see you have a nice soft edge all the way through. Now I'm gonna get a bit more indigo paint again. Make it a little bit darker around the edges here. So now we're back on wet on wet.
Now I'm going to actually make this side of the muscle darker. So that they're not exactly the same on both sides. Now I've gotten quite a bit of indigo paint on my brush. Try and make it really dark on this side. And then I'm going to make it darker along here as well. And down around this widest part. And then just have it transition along this side. I'm going to clean off my brush again. Now I'm going to add some purple. So just like with that other one, purple adds a little bit of warmth because it has a bit of pink or red in it. And I'm just going to add a little bit of purple into a few different spots just to give something more than what seems like a lot of indigo. We can still see a little bit of the ultramarine in there. Um, but mostly this one is quite heavily indigo. Just add a bit of the purple, just like that. Now we're gonna let that dry and then we'll have one more layer as well to that one. Now on this last one, we're gonna add some more ultramarine and some more indigo and some indigo to it as well. So we're gonna add, I'm gonna get some ultramarine onto my brush again darker than what I've done, um, what I did previously for this layer. And again, for this one, we're going to start wet on dry and then eventually move to being wet on wet again. So I'm going to basically go around it completely, just like the others. They all follow the same process, but depending what colors you use um, and where you basically place the paint, they can end up looking quite a bit different. So I've done a full round. So I've wet my brush. I'm going to add a little bit uh, of ultramarine, but not as much as I had before. And one more time with a just some clean water on my brush or fairly clean water. Now we're going to clean off the brush and add a bit of indigo. We don't want as much indigo as some of the others. And I'm going to just add it. I think this side uh, will be the darkest. This side and the base will be the darkest part of this muscle shell. So just keep adding more until you're happy with this layer. I'm going to keep going up. I'm actually going to switch to a bit of a smaller brush. Sometimes it's nice with a smaller brush, even if when you're trying to paint fairly loose to uh, switch to a smaller brush, just so you're not adding too much of some of these other colors. I'm going to add just some very watered down indigo to the left side of this or the right side of this a little bit more just soften that edge a little and maybe just some bit darker down here just a little bit Okay, clean my brush off and we're going to let this dry as well. Okay, so this layer is dry now and we're going to do the final layer. For this one, I'm only going to use the number six round, so my smaller paintbrush. And what I'm going to do is add some of the, I'll grab one of the, or a couple of the muscles just to show you what I'm adding. Add some of the rounded lines that, um, are on a muscle shell. And that's really going to help the viewer identify that this is a muscle shell and not some sort of just gradient blob. Not that there's anything wrong with uh, what we have at this point. It's just, it's not, it doesn't feel quite finished to me. 
So I'm going to wet my brush, my number six brush. I'm going to, I'm dabbing off the water so that it's not too, too wet because we're going to do wet on dry painting here and not transition to wet on wet painting. So I've added some quite dark indigo. I have to say indigo is one of my favorite colors to have on the palette um, because it's so beautifully dark. So I'm going to just go around the edge here and then just kind of swing around like that. And again, swing around. These don't need to be perfect. That's the great thing about painting things in nature. You don't need to have all of the little lines that a muscle would have, because I'm not aiming to have a photorealistic painting here. I'm gonna get a little more paint on my brush. And then I'm gonna come from this side as well. Just swing around. You can go both, both ways. You can have some circles that are just in the middle. Um, you can have some that just go very short, just to give that sense. And then I'm going to actually add a little more water to my brush again, kind of get rid of a bit of the water so that it's not too intense, but I want a bit of a paler indigo color for this side. Just a bit paler, just so it's not quite so intense on this side that isn't quite as dark. And I'm just gonna add a few more along here and maybe just a little line along the edge inside here. Maybe get a little darker paint on it. And there you go. That is just add a little bit more. That's the first one. So now we're going to go to this middle one. This middle one is quite dark already, and that's fine. I'm just gonna make sure that I have some really nice strong paint on my paintbrush. So very little water. Um, you wanna make sure that there's enough water that it flows off your paintbrush. And then here, I'm gonna flip this upside down just to make it easier. That's one thing as you're painting, you don't need to keep your paper in one direction. You can move it around just to make it easier for you. So again, just like that other one, start on the one side and then just kind of swing around, get yourself some circles. And you can see it's quite dark. Some of, some of it is uh, the, paint that you laid down earlier on the earlier layer is so dark you might not be able to see all of what you're adding now but you can see some of it and it really adds adds to show that this is a, a muscle um, go along this side as well and again some short and you want all these uh, little circular semicircles to go somewhat in the same direction. They don't need to be perfect, but you do want them to at least follow the form of, of the shell that you're painting. And do some little ones up there and I'm gonna call that done. Now I have this last one to do. So I'm gonna flip it around again. And again, we're using the indigo, um, not as dark as we did on this one, similar to this one. Start with a, kind of a medium amount, I guess, of the indigo on. And just like that other, the other two, start with a line along the edge and then just kind of swing out And depending on how many you want, how much you want to add of this, these lines, you can just add a tiny little bit just to give the essence of what people are seeing. Or you can add quite a few, just depends. And 
and just keep going with a few more. I'm going to do a little bit more. I'm just going to clean off my brush so I can uh, dab off the water. I want to get some fairly strong indigo paint for this last little bit on this one. And again, because we made it a bit darker on this side, it's this side can handle having some fairly dark lines without it being too seeming too dramatic. I don't want to put too much on this side of the darker, put a little bit, but for the most part, most part this side is going to be more subtle. Just add a little bit more, a little bit up here. Clean off my brush. And there we go. Those are some muscles. Now I'm going to bring back these, the real muscles. Now they don't look exactly the same at all, um, but that's fine. They're definitely clearly muscles um, and they're a great, great piece to practice with, great piece to practice both wet on wet and wet on dry. And they're just a fun painting. And uh, in the end, you have something that looks pretty nice. <laughs>